Good evening, everybody. Sorry for the delay, our normal technical problems that we have with Omnovia. Uh, tonight, we've got the great pleasure of having Tim Plain with us, and he is going to be working or showing us techniques on how to use the dividend uh, situations to make money. So I'm not going to go into any more detail than that. Tim, welcome to the Candlestick Forum. We're anxious. Just to see your information. Ah, it's great to be here. Um, oh, uh, uh, everybody, hold your questions. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, um, Tim, I'm just going to let the, everybody hold your questions until the end, so that Tim can come back and read the questions. Uh, he can't see them when his uh, display is up. So, with that, uh, take it. All right. Well, it's great to be here. Um, I write uh, for Investors Alley. I do uh, several uh, dividend and income-focused newsletters. Uh, my latest one just launching now is the Tax Smart Income Hunter, which focuses on the MLP market. Uh, as you can see from my starting screen here, uh, MLPs are um, master limited partnerships, income investments that focus on the energy sector. Uh, with the crash in oil prices, uh, MLPs have crashed along the way. And uh, I've been giving this presentation at various investors' conferences, and I talk about dangerous MLPs from the safer ones. Uh, just a little bit of back, quick background on me. I like to throw up these slides. I was an Air Force fighter pilot in my ill-spent youth. These are a couple of the aircraft I flew. And those two, and there's proof, a picture of myself about uh, 30 years ago, getting ready to strap on a jet and go for a ride. But let's commodity prices and master limited partnerships. Uh, I've got this slide right here that uh, since oil peaked back in early September, the uh, Alarian MLP index, which is the major index tracking the sector, has declined by 26%. Uh, the reason for that on these two uh, graphs is pretty obvious. Both crude oil and natural gas have declined significantly in value since uh, last summer. And uh, since MLPs are in the energy sector, the market has sold off significantly. Um, and here's the one year. But the thing, the different thing about uh, uh, master limited partnerships is they tend not to be completely tied to the prices of crude oil or natural gas. Some of them are not, their results are not even related to crude oil and natural gas. But uh, the market being what it is has sold off the group almost in total. So now at this point in time, with crude oil down at $50, $55 a barrel and gas at $275, you really need to be able to separate the MLPs that can thrive and survive in this type of energy environment versus those that actually will be hurt by lower energy prices. Um, if you're not familiar with the energy, energy chain, it kind of is divided this way. At the upstream end are the, uh, the oil drillers, the uh, exploration, the drillers, developed fields, and production operations. They're the ones that pump the oil and gas out of the ground and sell it further down the stream. In the midstream sector, which is where most MLPs operate, you have transportation, processing, storage and distribution, all the things necessary in the crude oil or natural gas from the oil fields to the end users. Then in the downstream sector of the uh, energy cycle, you have the manufacturing. You have your uh, refineries, petrochemicals, uh, marketing companies, you can go all the way down to your neighborhood gas station would be part of the downstream end of the, the energy sector. So that's, uh, you really need to make a difference between those uh, publicly traded MLPs. Okay, let's go. Here we go. Upstream MLPs. We're going in the right direction. Uh, those, as from the last slide, those are the drillers. 
in the up in the MLP market, the upstream MLPs don't really do a lot of drilling. These are companies that own oil and gas wells for the production. That's they uh, have. Um, they, they hedge a lot of their future production so they can lock in their cash flows. And historically, these have been 8 to 10% yielding MLPs, fairly steady distributions with uh, not much in the way of distribution growth. However, they, most of them weren't prepared for uh, the tremendous drop in the price of crude oil. And at the start of this year, uh, they the majority of the group bit the bullet and slashed their distribution rates in the 40 to 60 percent range. Uh, where that left them is that uh, now in 2015 anyway, they, oh, that's the DCF there, to, to more than cover their, their, their new distribution rates with oil in the 15 to 60 dollar range and natural gas in the 260 to 3 dollar range. So they, they have stabilized themselves in 2015. But if you watch the prices of these, the unit prices, which is MLPs, you have units instead of shares, the unit prices still tend to swing significantly with changes in the price of WTI crude. It doesn't matter whether an MLP possibly gets a significant portion of its revenue from natural gas. It doesn't really matter where if uh, the distributions are protected with hedges. Uh, as the uh, price of energy changes, so do the enterprises. So that's something we have to watch out for. It leaves you some opportunities. There are some great trading opportunities. Uh, we just did one this last week. Uh, Legacy Reserves um, had really, the enterprise had been driven down to a stupid level where the, uh, the uh, distribution yield had climbed to over 17%. The company announced a couple major acquisitions late Friday afternoon, and uh, the unit prices recovered about 20% just over the last couple of days. Um, here are some of the upstream names. I just to go over a little quick. Uh, Lynn Energy, which uh, trades under LINE, and then they also have a 1099 version of the same units under uh, Lynco, LNCO. Lynn is the largest of the of the upstream MLPs. Uh, gone through a lot of turbulence over the last couple of years, but uh, right now, which so far in 20. 2015 has been the start of the upstream business. They've made agreements to uh, acquire two of the smaller publicly traded MLPs, more troubled MLPs. So as we roll into the third and fourth quarter, um, Vanguard is in really good shape to support their distribution and start growing it with any type of uh, gains in energy prices. On the speculative list, we uh, Legacy Reserves, LGCY, um, after their announcements this week, I'd probably move them up into the good category. Uh, smaller company, uh, again, tremendously volatility in the unit price, but they're developing a good and growing business in the current energy environment. So I'd take a close look at that one. And then Memorial Production Partners, MEMP, they are the only upstream MLP that has not reduced their distribution rate from what they were paying last year. So their unit price has been a little more stable. Their cash flow so far this year is coming up a little short of what they're actually paying out to investors. So I have um, MEMP in the speculative uh, category right now because this is a company that really needs to make some moves, pick up some assets at lower prices, do um, some sort of acquisition or deal with another company to help stabilize their cash flow, or they could be forced to reduce their dis distribution in the next couple of quarters. And then uh, Brett Bird Energy Partners is the uh, probably remaining larger upstream MLP, and they're troubled. They've brought, they've really hammered their distribution. 
distribution, and this is one that uh, is a very, very speculative play, um, not for the income-focused investor, but if uh, you, you were making a serious bet on higher energy prices, this one could be a turnaround play. Actually, one of my subscribers asked me about it today, and as I was thinking about it, I think probably the most likely result uh, for uh, Brett Burn is will be absorbed. All right, now we'll jump into uh, midstream. Midstream MLPs are the largest sector of, of the uh, MLP space. These are your pipelines, your storage companies, your, tran your uh, terminals. Uh, they provide a whole range of services that make the energy business run, the energy business operate in this country. And there are quite a few different into the major ones in just a minute. Uh, the, the big thing to watch out for out of this group, because generally speaking, midstream MLPs have stable fee-based cash flows. Um, they will be able to sustain and grow their distributions. Overall, that these are companies that have made their name as investments with steady quarterly distribution growth as they build their businesses. Um, and they really, the, a lot of them should really not see that much damage from lower energy prices. The ones that, uh, for my second bullet point there, that are most in danger are the MLPs that uh, actually gather um, crude oil or natural gas out of the plays and process it or send it to the pipelines. Gathering focused MLPs with fewer drill rigs uh, operating out in the plays. It, um, will have less opportunities to grow that business or even start to see some of their uh, uh, gathering business decline as well as decline and new wells are not brought online to uh, uh, replace any declines in production in the place. Uh, final point that we'll get to here is uh, sponsor assets. A lot of MLPs have larger companies that are own their general partner um, side and manage the business and sponsors can transfer assets to an MLP as a way to monetize those assets and also help the MLP grow its business. And with MLP prices down across the board, some of the well-sponsored MLPs and the assets that are available to those MLPs from their sponsor may be undervalued. So. We're going to start with uh, just going through the midstream sectors. Uh, the one maybe people think about first are the traditional pipeline MLPs. These are partnerships that own interstate pipelines. Um, any uh, crude oil or natural gas that's transmitted interstate, or their rates are controlled by FERC. The Federal Energy Regulatory Commission, I think is what it's called. But the, these, these companies have built-in rate, rate increases that are the government sets, sets how much they can increase their, their rates each year. Lately, it's been about 7%, 5 6 7% per year. They increase their transmission rates. So they have built-in growth without adding assets. And then at the same time, they're... They build more pipelines or add to their pipelines or increase the uh, capacity of their pipelines to generate additional growth. So these are your, traditionally your most stable um, of the MLPs. Just to go over a, a few of them here, uh, Spectra Energy Partners is a uh, um, large cap MLP. They have they're not a tremendous grower, but they, they have a very, very large backlog of projects that will allow them to maintain their steady growth. I think right now they're yielding about 6% with plans to grow in their distributions at 6 to 8% per year, which if you're an income-focused investor, that's a very nice combination. Uh, uh, Enbridge Energy Partners, next one up, is probably the most pure play crude oil pipeline company. It's uh, Bridge uh, Inc., a large Canadian pipeline company, and EEP 
all they do is own uh, crude oil pipelines crisscrossing the U.S. Again, you're at that six and six, six percent yield, six percent, maybe not quite four percent uh, distribution growth every year, just a very stable income play. Uh, Plains All American Pipelines, PAA, uh, one of the more aggressive historically has been one of the best pipeline MLPs, uh, yields around 5 to 6 percent and have been able to keep their distribution growth up to 10 percent per year. Uh, they do have some gathering assets so their business is slowing somewhat and they're the ones that owns that pipeline that uh, sprung the big leak in Santa Barbara, California. So right now I'm just kind of waiting for um, the second quarter earnings report to see what management has to say about that one. The good news is that uh, the unit price of PAA has been driven down quite a bit, pushing the yield up much higher than what it traditionally is. Turns out to not be a a uh, major factor in the company's cash flow, PAA is really on sale right now. And finally, we have Tallgrass Energy Partners, which is a, um, a newer MLP, just uh, IPO'd a few years ago. It is, uh, if you're looking for high growth over the last couple of years, they've been increasing their distribution rate by 40% a year. That's 10% every quarter they've been bumping up those distributions. It still yields about 4% and they're projected to be able to grow. They're building pipelines up in the uh, uh, northern Rockies region to bring some of that oil and uh, gas into the uh, um, main energy hubs and they just have a tremendous growth potential. I think it's one of the best long-term growth plus yield uh, NLPs out there. All right, as I mentioned earlier, these are some of the uh, uh, where the NLPs that are going to have the most problems in a slower uh, production growth, lower energy price environment are the ones that have significant revenues generated from gathering and processing in the plays. And here are um, probably the largest NLPs. Um, operating in that area. Enterprise Product Partners, EPT, is the largest MLP. It's got a $60 billion market cap. Um, historically very stable. This is a 5% yielding MLP that will grow their distributions by 5 to 6% per year. Uh, over the last couple of quarters, their cash flow growth has been slowing. They do keep a uh, um, a large cushion on their distributable cash flow versus their distributions and it uh, um, I think with the, the recent drop in the unit price EPD is a value at this point in time but uh, the ride could get bumpy if we get some significant pullback in the amount of oil and gas being produced. One Oak Partners, another large cap MLP, really focused on the natural gas and natural gas liquid space. They have not in the last year or so as uh, uh, business has slowed down, gathering has slowed down. They did not raise their distribution last quarter. Uh, One Oak has really become a more speculative play. The only good side of it is that uh, um, the yield is up into the 9% range right now, so if you feel like you could live with earning 9% and, uh, and uh, to go, uh, you have to be patient with this one. It is a uh, high quality MLP, large cap, very financially stable. They're just not going to be able to hit the goal they want until energy prices start to recover. MarkWest Energy Partners is the largest uh, MLP covering the, uh, the Appalachian Basin um, areas. Steady grower, nothing exciting there. Just you, you kind of, um, to me, MarkWest is always investing a lot of capital without generating comparable distribution growth for investors, but they are very conservatively run. EQT Midstream Partners is a fairly new, is a, 
one that uh, I think has more opportunity. They are uh, very strong sponsors in, in their region, and they've committed to grow their distributions by close to 20% per year. So you're picking and you're, with that type of growth, you have about a 3% yield. But out of this uh, group, that's my favorite right now. Uh, actually, it's it's more favorable since the enterprise has dropped about 10% over the last couple of months. But uh, I think this is one that's really undervalued. They they have the assets and they have the sponsor assets that are growth goals and could surprise over the next couple of years. Western Grass Partners, another one. Just uh, they are they're sponsored by Anadarko Petroleum. Good steady growth. Um, if you're looking for something with a 5% yield and 8% distribution growth, well, they should be able to produce it. And uh, okay, I might have got myself turned around here. I, I don't remember which one is this. Western Gas Partner. Yeah, I think Western Gas is with Anadarko, and then Endless Midstream Partners is sponsored by another one of the large EMP Energy companies. I'll have to check on that and get back with you. But both of those two, Western Gas Partners and Enlink, have very large uh, EMP sponsors, uh, corporate sponsors, that uh, should that have maintained their their growth programs to continue drilling and continue production. So as long as the, their their sponsors continue to plan on growing their um, drilling and production, these two should be able to hit their growth goals. Well, out of this group, uh, the bottom three are probably the best investment opportunities. Well, the top three, they're ones, the yields are attractive, but you will be waiting. It will take higher energy prices before they can really get back to the levels of uh, distribution growth they've produced in the past. Um, the, uh, what I call logistics-focused MLPs have more next group, secure revenue streams. These are companies that are not dependent on how much oil and gas is coming out of the uh, energy plays. They provide pipeline services, transportation services, um, uh, pipelines for uh, uh, refined products, just a uh, um, a whole host of services that the energy sector needs, whether uh, oil is at $50 a barrel or $150 a barrel, their businesses, their business services will be necessary. These companies generate uh, growth by acquiring assets, developing assets. Uh, for example, Magellan Midstream Partners is the largest trans uh, large, largest owner of refined product pipelines. And they grow their business by uh, um, building more pipelines, transporting more oil, gas, jet fuel. Uh, Sunoco Logistics Partners, very similar to that. Uh, a lot of transport uh, pipelines, storage terminals. Uh, Genesis Energy LP, they're kind of a hodgepodge of different things. A very independent company that just does smaller projects where they can find very good returns on their investment. Um, DLK, DKL, Delic Logistics Partners, has been one of the best performing MLPs this year. They are uh, associated with a smaller refining company and uh, they're generating very attractive distribution growth. And uh, Uh, kind of jumping around here because I wanted to say Sprague Resources LP. This is this is probably they, this is a fairly new MLP that owns um, energy distribution assets up in the Northeast. They uh, terminals in places like New York City and Boston, and they're they're such a an interesting company because they generate. Uh, a huge portion of their distributable cash flow in the uh, in the winter quarters in the, in the first in the 
uh, fourth quarter of 2014 and the first quarter of 2015, it generated free cash flow double distributions for 2015. The company just has a tremendous business. They got huge. excess cash flow, and uh, they've just been pretty steadily increasing their distribution, but the, they, they have so much free cash flow, they can actually put some very large distribution increases out to investors over the next couple of years. All right, got a lot of people. and these companies all have huge sponsors that allow them to regularly sell assets to the NLP to monetize those assets. So in, in NLP speak, we call these drop downs. So once or twice a year, um, the sponsor will sell a portion of a pipeline or terminal or storage facility to the NLP drop downs so that the NLP can basically be guaranteed to increase their distributions at a preset rate. And all of them are, all four listed here, are shooting for 20 to 25 percent distribution growth. So if you have, a, let's say, a two and a half, two percent yield with 20 percent distribution growth, you're getting total returns on a mathematical basis of 20 to 25 percent per year, and it doubles your money close to every three years. Um, the only, uh, um, so they all look about the same. What I recommend to do is kind of watch them a little bit, try to pick up some units when the market sells off everything. These don't sell off very often when you're having your, your quarterly distri your distribution increase by 5% or greater every quarter, the market stays interested. Uh, just uh, one extra word here about Dominion Midstream Partners. They're the only one not owned by a uh, major energy company. They're owned by um, the, the large utility company, Dominion. And uh, the nice part about this story, Dominion is building the only LNG export facility on the East Coast. That facility be completed in about, scheduled to be completed in 2017. And once that's completed, it can be dropped down to the MLP over time, uh, locking in growth for Dominion Midstream Partners for a decade or longer into the future. All right. So we've been through upstream. We've been through midstream. We're going to just spend a few minutes here on downstream. Uh, probably should spend a little more time. Downstream MLPs. Uh, they own and operate refineries. There are three publicly traded downstream MLPs, uh, Elon USA Partners, CDR Energy Partners, and Northern Tier Energy. These three um, all own, well, CDRR owns two refineries. The other two each own a single refinery. And they're, they're different from most MLPs in that they have variable distribution policies. They uh, pay out every quarter. And, and how much they make is completely tied to the energy price environment. Their input, crude oil, are that prices are set by markets and their output. Things like uh, gasoline, diesel fuel, jet fuel, they're all market-based pricing. So the refinery lives on what we call the crack spread. That's the uh, um, difference between the price of the fuels it sells and the uh, cost of the crude oil that uh, it purchases. And in this new energy price environment, uh, since the beginning of 2015, the crack spreads and refining margins for refineries are about 5% higher than they were in 2014. It's just, uh, well, Fuel prices are down a lot, gasoline and diesel are down a lot, they haven't fallen as far as crude oil, and these, these uh, refineries are tremendously profitable. 
Uh, you have variable distributions, so it changes every quarter, but you know, based on the last quarter's distributions, they all are sporting yields in the 12 to 14 percent range. The crack spreads I track are a couple bucks per barrel lighter for the second quarter than they were for the first quarter, so I expect higher distributions. Uh, if you like to short-term trade, the unit prices of these companies tend to swing quite a bit. If you have a quarter where a company pays a lower than expected distribution, the unit price will drop. You can follow the energy prices and see that a very nice swing in unit price. These downstream NLPs, they're a lot of fun. They're a place where if you, if you learn your P's and Q's, um, a lot of pricing inefficiency in the market, and they can put a lot of cash into your brokerage account. All right, a couple of uh, final thoughts here before we'll open it up for questions. I got a late start, so I ripped through this stuff. Um, in this environment, uh, size matters. The uh, you know last year in 2014, I was a big fan of the smaller cap MLPs. They had places where they could really pump up their growth. They could make uh, just small investments and put some serious growth into the distributions, but the drop in energy price just hammered the small ones. The large cap MLPs are the ones they have stability now and then they have the capital facilities to be able to buy assets on the cheap and continue to grow their businesses at their uh, rates similar or close to their historic return. It's a time to be patient, yeah, like we were talking about One Oak Partners. Go for the yield. One Oak traditionally has yielded less than 6%. It's now yielding over 9%. But uh, distribution growth is going to be very slow until energy prices recover. So the good thing about MLPs, the quality MLP, you get paid while you wait. And uh, so you can either go for the yield the ones with big, good sponsorship arrangements, and uh, um, let those quarterly distribution increases help drive your unit prices. Uh, finally, as I discussed earlier, uh, these, although a lot of these MLPs, their results are not closely tied to the price of crude oil, the price of crude oil still affects how the market thinks about them. They will sell off when crude oil drops. They will increase in value when crude oil goes up. So if you're looking at MLPs, that uh, you can pick up quality MLP units at uh, much cheaper prices when crude swings down. Uh, EQM, EQT, Midstream Partners, that has nothing to do with crude oil. None of its business does, and it's going to grow its distributions by 20% a year. But with food dropping over the last couple of weeks, so has the enterprise. And uh, just one final pick here, Tesoro Logistics Partners. They are uh, sponsored by Tesoro Energy Corp., another refiner. TLLP has, it's a steady 15% annual distribution growth company, but it has just been lost in the shuffle here. The market has not valued that distribution growth over the last year or so. And at some point in time, they're going to figure out that uh, this is a tremendous yield plus growth opportunity, uh, 25 to 30% or more total return in a year. All right. Looks like I'm about done. We'll try to find some different screens here. Okay. Um, if, you, if you're interested in more research, I have a complete research on my tax smart income hunter. Um, you can contact me and ask any questions about MLPs or my other newsletters. But let's get this open for questions. Okay, there we go. How do I turn off my transmitter here? Becky, you there?
Tim, up at the okay. Tim, projector. yeah, up at the top of your screen it says uh, stop. There should be a red button that says stop. There it is. Okay, we're stopped. There we go. I see lots of questions flying in here. So where do we want to start? All right. That's, man, these guys are they're hot. Okay, I can give the name of the company after Mark Lewis Energy Partners real quick. EQT and Midstream Partners, EQM. Okay. HCLP dropped a little bit. I'm going to kind of go from, <laughs> we'll start at the bottom here. Uh, coming in fast. Okay. Uh, MLPs are down this year. Just as I said, the market does not separate uh, um, different uh, energy sector companies on their businesses. They drive everything based on what they see WTI doing. So, you know, the MLP sector is offering a lot of value nowadays. Uh, I like KMI. I think Kinder Morgan is an awesome company. Right now, 5% yield. Uh, they're promising 10% distribution growth through 2020. Uh, they've hit as long as uh, Rich Kinder, so I, I have no reason to believe they won't hit what they're doing. Um, then I, I will drop down the ears there. I, uh, you know, I am a cash flow guy. I watch these guys. Uh, are they hitting their distributable cash flow goals? Are they able to hit their goal? If they hit their distributable cash flow goals, however they get the money into their company, they can grow their distributions. If they aren't, uh, if something's not working with their cash flow, I try to figure out what it is. And so I, I don't look at the NAV. I, I'm all about yield and distribution growth. Uh, MLPs, tax issues. As an owner of a master limited partnership, you get basically the distributions or tax-free income, and then you receive a Schedule K-1, which divides up you like you're a partner in any partnership, which reports your share of profits or losses. Basically, with an MLP, the income you earn is about 80% tax-free. Um, the big issues come with MLPs. If you own them for years and years and sell them, you can get end up with a pretty good uh, um, tax bite. But uh, we have ways around that. Okay, royalty trusts. Uh, I, I don't follow royalty trusts. They're just too cyclical with energy prices. Uh, I, I, I'm a fan of stability of income and stability of cash flow. So that's uh, kind of my point. The, the place where I like to play cycles is with the, uh, the downstream MLPs, the refiners, because I have a system there where I can, I'm getting pretty good at figuring out what these guys are going to be able to do with their, their quarterly distributions. Okay. Oil. Ah, VLP, uh, Valero, Valero Logistics Partners, is the MLP uh, spun off by Valero Energy. Uh, Valero does own gas stations. The, the limited partnership does not. The VLP owns strictly, it owns crude oil and product pipelines. It owns crude oil and product terminals. All it does is support uh, um, Transporting and storing and terminaling, product, terminaling products. Uh, VLA is an excellent, excellent story. I, I, I was just looking at the other day. They're projecting $200 million of EBITDA by the end of this year, annualized basis. And uh, Valero has a billion dollars worth that they can drop down. So years of growth in VLP. Don't. Okay, the IRA MLP question, I get it every time. <laughs> uh, I don't recommend putting MLPs in IRAs. It can be done. It can work. The biggest problem is you, just, you have no idea what's going to happen with that uh, um, MLP in an IRA. MLPs generate what's called unrelated business income. 
And if your IRA generates more than $1,000 of unrelated business income, your IRA has to file a tax return and pay corporate income taxes. And you don't know how much an ML, unrelated business income the, the MLP will generate until it's in your IRA. So I uh, recommend a few uh, alternative products that uh, give you MLP-like returns if you want to get MLP returns in your IRA. There's a couple pretty neat ETFs and ETNs out there. Uh, just Fred, I see your question there. Um, there's a couple of better looking ones out there. Just they're starting to do some actively managed. One we'll throw out right now is AMZA. It's an actively managed ETF. It uses the uh, um, same uh, MLPs as AMLP, but it, it it gives itself the ability to rebalance. To, to reweight based upon growth and also can write some options and do a little bit of leverage. The MLP in a Roth IRA, I've heard people getting away with it. Again, I have a lot of people that subscribe to me, so I, I that's something I probably need to dig into deeper. Okay, list three best for growth and income. Phil, there's a hundred of them. Um, Let's see. Uh, let's talk about. Um, I mean, there, there's differences. You can kind of go for current income. So if you want current income, you can look at like Plains All American Pipelines or uh, let's see what other ones we have out there. Um, SEP percent yields with steady six to seven percent distribution growth. Um, on the other side, there's the high growth one. The Valero Logistics Partners, Philip 66 Partners, Shell Logistics Partners, they're going to be growing their distributions by in excess of 20% a year, which you're only going to get you know, current yields in the low twos, but you should get a great total return over a period of years. So it, it's kind of a mix and match. EP, I think they're supposed to start exporting in the second half of this year. Uh, it's something I just stay away from. They've loaded on so much debt and diluted that business so much. It's going to be a long time before there's any growth there. So uh, um, look at Dominion Midstream Partners if you're interested in the uh, uh, liquid natural gas exporting. John, um, <laughs> seasonality. Um, I didn't even talk about them, but some of the uh, propane MLPs are seasonal. Uh, Sprog Resources, which I talked about, SRLP can be a little seasonal. I haven't really looked at the chart. Yeah, AMZ has almost no volume. That is the truth. You really have to uh, um, use limit orders. Uh, the guys over there, I talk to the managers over there kind of regularly, and they're trying hard. Um, but uh, so buy some AMZA so they get some more volume. Uh, K1s, K1s, I don't know if you call them a problem. With an MLP, you're buying a very tax advantaged investment. Is you have to do K1 tax reporting. Uh, most of the, uh, the uh, tax software programs can handle K1s pretty accurately. You need to hang on to your K1s forever because when you sell, uh, you don't want to get stuck with uh, more taxes than you, than you owe, but uh, um, if you're in a moderate to high tax bracket, uh, my opinion is working with K-1s more than offsets the after-tax gains you can get out of uh, MLPs. CMLP, Crestwood Midstream. I used to, <laughs> what a mess. Uh, they've been a mess ever since they merged with energy, and now they're going to merge the GP and LP together. We'll see what happens when they when they come out of it. They they seem to have a very good asset base, but they don't seem to have done a very good job of getting cash flow up so they can grow distributions. Um, I mean, you can you know, minimum investment. You can just buy a few shares of these things, Mark. But uh, yeah, uh, you know, it, again, these are uh, tax advantage investments, so it depends on your tax bracket and how much capital you have to uh, um, 
look to work. I think you know if if you like in the energy sector, you can you can put some work in, uh, um, you know in the MLP sector, and I think it'll pay off well for you. Uh, San Juan Basin Royalty Trust is a royalty trust. Uh, I think they're Canadian. It's been a while since I looked at them. They make their money by you know selling crude oil and you know, what you earn varies with uh, the price of crude. Tanker companies. Uh, yeah, the tanker business. Uh, actually, I for, for the tanker business, I get away from partnerships and ship finance is my recommended tanker oriented, or it's not completely tankers, but SFL. Yeah, TLLP was 73. Uh, I'll tell you a couple of TL, it's, but you know, down that amount is, is not atypical for MLPs because they've all dropped by that much since crude oil fell off the table last fall. Uh, I think you just got to be patient with TLLP because they keep bumping that distribution up by three and a half, four percent every quarter. And, uh, you know, it's a better value now than it was, although I think I probably bought some in the high 60s somewhere. But, and if you look at the longer term chart of TLLP since its inception, it's about five or six years old, it, it shows a pretty interesting cycle of how it tends to run up quickly and then pull back and run up quickly. I mean, the, the general direction is up. But uh, just uh, pull up the TLLP chart and look at its full history and you'll kind of see what I'm talking about. Sea Drill Limited Partnerships. Uh, haven't dug into it deeply lately. The offshore drilling companies just bother me. Um, Sydney, uh, I love the general partner companies, not OK in particular. There are a few publicly traded general partners. Uh, uh, Williams Companies, PAGP, Plains, whatever the, uh, for Plains All-American. Um, TEGP just launched for Tallgrass Energy Partners. A peer play general partner should uh, multiply the distribution growth of the underlying master limited partnership. Uh, uh, Targa resources, Targa, yeah, Targa midstream, midstream partners, I think is what they are. NGLS grows its distribution by about 8% a year. TRGP, the general partner, has been growing its distribution by 25% a year. OKE is not a very good example since OKE has stopped growing its distribution. So OKE can't increase their dividends. Um, but uh, yeah, the uh, general partner companies are not a great place if you're growth oriented. I'm kind of uh, stand 5% um, on a single portfolio. I'm kind of a 20 position guy in my portfolio, 20 or 25, fairly equally weighted, so I'm looking at 4 to 5 percent positions. Um, North American Tanker is an interesting company. I think they're poised to turn around. Just uh, haven't been watching tanker rates that close. I do not know DSE, Fred. All right, talking fast here. Everybody getting what they need? Steve, how are we doing? Looks like Steve, you got I thank you very much for that. Yeah, looks like you got most what of the come? questions. Yeah, what to buy this week? Yeah. Well, Tim, very good information. All right. Um, well, just a quick follow-up here. All the MLPs will start announcing their distributions at the uh, um, so in the second half of July. And you know the big growers, you, you, you got a chance to pick up some quick bumps. If uh, Kinder Morgan's one, I'm waiting for them to announce their distribution. Uh, KMI, because uh, yeah, I covered a lot. Really, Lin Energy. Um, I actually own quite a bit of Linco. But it's it's a long-term uh, 
wait uh, while I collect my 1% a month in dividends from, from Lynn Energy. Okay, Steve. I'll stop talking now. Well, Tim, very good information. Thank you. Everybody okay. take a look oh. at uh, Tim's. Yeah, take a look at Tim's offer. Um, yeah, very, very good. This, this gives everybody another perspective of, again, putting uh, probabilities of being in the right place at the right time. Yeah, and, and I think NLPs are getting close to being in the right place. You know, the, 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 hat, the, money, the, the money that chases hot stuff is, is run away, and, you know, many of these companies are still what they were a year ago, just a lot cheaper. Very good. All right. Tim, thank you very much. With okay, that, Steve. everybody have a good Yep. We'll hopefully have you back soon. All right. I enjoyed it. Thank you. Thank you. All right, everybody, have a good evening. We'll see you in the chat rooms.